Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of Berlin has shown a clear link between vitamin D levels and the slowing of epigenetic age as measured by DNA methylation clocks. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of Berlin about vitamin D and slowing of epigenetic aging has got to offer. This is a review of a paper I read that was penned by Josh Conway that looked into a study that showed a significant link between higher vitamin D levels and slower epigenetic aging. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. The health impact of vitamin D deficiency and benefits of its supplementation are subject to an ongoing controversial discussion. That said, estimations suggest that around 1 billion people worldwide have a serum vitamin D level below 50 nanomoles per litre. That number being widely accepted as the entry level for vitamin D deficiency. This study's cohort consisted of participants aged between 60 and 85, and they were involved in the Berlin Aging Study 2, also known as BASE 2. The researchers had previously used data from this cohort to determine a relationship between the lack of vitamin D and accelerated epigenetic age. Their hypothesis was confirmed by use of the 7CPG epigenetic clock that is strongly associated with chronological age. That study showed that people who are deficient in vitamin D have an epigenetic age that is nearly a year older than the average. This new study, however, asked a different question. Can restoring vitamin D levels through supplementation reverse the effects on epigenetic age? To answer this question, the study's authors utilized over a thousand participants who were approximately 68 years old at baseline and re-examined them at an average age of 75. The group was roughly evenly split between men and women. Let's take a quick look at the initial stats. At baseline, 50% of the participants were deficient in vitamin D, and of those, only 7% would take in supplements. In the follow-up portion, only 25 were deficient, and a fifth, that's around 20%, of the participants were then taking supplements. Both times, around three-fifths, which is 60% of the participants, received their blood draws during the sunnier months of the year, when vitamin D deficiency, in theory, is less likely. They also noted that some people who were originally taking vitamin D supplements had stopped, and 82% of the supplement takers in this study had only begun supplementation after the baseline statistics. In order to analyze the effects of vitamin D supplementation, the researchers identified 63 people who had previously been deficient in vitamin D, but had become sufficient after supplementation. They were named the treated group. They then matched these participants based on demographic data to 63 people who were deficient and unsupplemented, marking them as the untreated group. After matching the treated and untreated group, Another 63 unsupplemented but healthy people were used as the control group. Let's take a look at the results, and they were only statistically significant in two of the five epigenetic clocks used to measure. Participants who went from deficient to sufficient through vitamin D supplementation were shown to be epigenetically younger by more than two and a half years, according to the 7CPG clock, and 15 months younger, according to the Horveth epigenetic clock, which is also used to measure chronological age. However, while some effects were visible on the Hannum, Grimage, and Levine clocks, these differences were not deemed to be statistically significant, and there were no significant differences between the vitamin D supplemented group and the people with healthy levels of vitamin D, which I think shows it doesn't really matter where you get your vitamin D from if you are insufficient. As with all studies, there are some limitations that we need to consider. 
Despite the researchers' efforts, this is still a longitudinal study and not a true blinded effectiveness study. Also, there was no placebo group and the treated, untreated and healthy groups were established after the fact. The researchers also noted multiple potential confounding factors, most notably that people taking vitamin D supplements may have also attempted to improve their overall health through other means. I cannot find any data on the actual dosages that were taken by the cohort. However, the report appears to use the standard of sufficient and insufficient as markers. So if you want to try and reduce your epigenetic age using vitamin D, firstly, I recommend you have a blood test to see if you are indeed insufficient. Then consult with a medical professional to ascertain your daily dose requirement if indeed you do require it. At present, the National Institute of Health guidelines for the average age of viewers of the channel are adults between 19 and 70 years of age, 600 international units per day, adults who are 71 years and older, 800 international units per day, and pregnant and breastfeeding women, 600 international units per day. The authors of the paper concluded that even taking into account the limitations, it's highly likely that an ongoing lack of vitamin D is having a noticeable effect on people's epigenetics. But to prove the existence of an ironclad causal relationship, a double-blinded study must be conducted. Fortunately, as a start, for future research, a double-blinded study has already been conducted on the safety of vitamin D supplements. And there's a link in the description below to this study. So if you have taken a blood test and you are insufficient and you're looking for a reputable supplier, Renew by Science will sell you 60 servings of 2,500 international units of vitamin D3 and 200 micrograms of vitamin K2 for $22.95. Dunaage.org will sell you 60 servings of 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 and 120 micrograms of vitamin K2 for $18. Add to those prices the 10% My NMN discount code and they drop to for Renew by Science $20.66 and for Do Not Age that drops to $16.20. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes as to whether the vitamin D in this study on its own caused the changes in epigenetic age is obviously still open to debate. However, whether vitamin D is important to our overall health, I believe it's certainly not in question at all. So regardless of the results of this study, I urge you all to get a blood test to find out where you sit in the brackets of sufficient and insufficient. And if you are insufficient, find or seek the advice of a medical professional. Don't take my word for it. Find out what you need to do to get your levels back up in to the sufficient bracket. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Goodbye for now.